Hello and welcome to today's lesson. We're going to be covering topics under the standard 1.2 in third grade and also topics under the study island lesson called number sentences. In this lesson we're going to be looking at what number I can fill into a blank, a letter, or a symbol that will make both sides of the equations true. So as I explain how to do these problems, if you could copy them down and take some notes. That's only going to help you because you'll have something ref to refer back to when you are trying these on your own and studying. And if I ever go too fast, just pause the video and rewind so you can get caught back up. And as we try a few, you can even pause at the beginning of a question, work the problem out yourself, and then watch the video to check yourself and see how well you did. And it's either going to tell you you're doing really great so far or this is just an area you need to study more, which is fine. So I'm so glad that you are joining us today and let's go ahead and take your notes. So when you are think, trying to figure out what the mystery number is, whether it's a symbol, an X, or a blank, or a box, you can think of it as the equal sign being two sides of a scale that you're trying to keep balanced. So here I have a scale, and I have on my left side of the scale the x plus the 3. So that means I have some mystery amounts that I don't know, plus 3 objects. So here's the x showing the mystery amounts and the 3 objects. And then on the right side of the scale I have 7 objects. So to figure out how many objects x represents, I'm going to have to figure out how how many I have to add to the left side to get it to be 7, since this side is already 7. So if I look at it, I can cross off. I have 3 on each side that already cancel each other out, and then I still have 4 left over on that right side that I still need to account for, that I still need to add to the right side to make it true. So that means x has to be equal to 4. And so that's just one way to think about how you could solve these equations that are missing a number. So here's an example. We have 14 equals blank plus 11. And we need to know what number do we need to add to 11 to get to 14. So you might be able to look at that and know that math fact and know what the answer is. But if you don't, there's a few ways that you can figure it out. The first way is to just plug each of your choices in. So if you take 5 plus 11, does that equal 14? No, that equals 16. If you take 1 plus 11, does it equal 14? No, that equals 12. Take 3 plus 14, does that equal 14? Yes, it does. So that means C is probably going to be our answer. And then we have D is 7. 7 plus 11 is 18, so D isn't going to be my answer. So that is one way to do it. And so let's look at another way. The other way is to undo the operation, which means you do the opposite. So since this is addition here, I want to subtract 14 minus 11. And when I do that, I get 3 as my answer. So that's looking more and more like C is my answer. And then the last way you could do it is to set up a scale and see what you think makes it balance. So I have, and you could actually draw it out, you know, you could draw out 14 objects. And then you could draw out 11 on the right side. And you could cross them out and see how many is left over, just like I showed you in the notes. And then that would also get you three because 3 plus 11 is 14. So pick one way that works really well for you and stick with it. But those are the three different ways that we could solve these problems. Here's another example of finding what mystery number is here. This time they're just representing N, but that could be a blank. That could be a symbol. Of just N is just what they picked this time. And so I'm going to be adding 7 to that mystery number on the left and 12 is going to be on the right. So what number do I fill in here that will get me, if I add 7 to it, will get me to 12? And so you might know that math fact. If you don't, then you can do guess or check, or you can do opposite operations. 
So guess and check, it was 19 plus 7, is that 12? No, I'm already starting with too much with 19. What about 3? 3 plus 7 is 10, not 12. What about 7? 7 plus 7 is 14, not 12. What about 5? 5 plus 7 is 12. So that means that that will balance each side because 12 equals 12. So that means 5 is going to be my answer. The other way you could try out is to can is the opposite operations and take 12 minus, minus 7, and 12 minus 7 is 5, so my final answer is definitely D. So which number makes this number sentence true? So we're looking for what number can I put in the blank that if I take 20 minus that number will equal 12. So you can think of that as a scale, and you want to know if you have 20 objects, so here are my 20 objects, and you can draw that out too. You could use stars or circles or whatever it is you like to draw that doesn't take very long. And I'm looking for if I take, how many can I take away and have 12 left over? So if I count out 12, that's what I'm going to have left. So that means I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 that I'm going to have to take away. So 20 minus 8 equals 12. And so that's one way you could do it. You could also substitute in each of these choices and see which one gives you 12 also. Right, here's another one with subtraction. I have a 7 on the left side of the equation and a 19 minus C, whatever that mystery number is. So I'm looking, what number can I take away from 19 that will leave me with 7. And so you could draw the symbols like we, I showed you in the last problem and group out 7 to be left and count up how many you'd have to take away. You can also, because the bigger number here is the 19, you, if you think about your fact families, the bigger number always stays at the beginning and it's always subtraction. So here you can't do operation opposite operation because you the bigger number is what you know. So you're going to take 19 minus 7 and that's going to equal 12. And so 12 is going to be my answer and it's always a good idea to check it. So you can just go ahead and do 19 minus 12 does equal 7. So it checks out. So 12 is definitely my final answer. This next question has a few more numbers in it than the first one, but just no big deal. First, I have a blank minus 4 on the left side of the equation. So I'm looking for some mystery number that I can subtract 4 from and get the same as the right side of the equation, which was 4 plus 1. So I can, since the 4 plus 1 is all on one side of the equation, I can go ahead and add that. And so 4 plus 1 here is going to be 5. So I'm looking for what number, minus, if I subtract 4 from it, will give me 5. Well here, because I'm looking for the bigger number, I can do the opposite operation. So I can take 5 plus the 4, because it's the opposite operation. So 5 plus 4 equals 9. So 9 is going to be my final answer, which is D. Here... I have three numbers being added together to get me to 53. So that one's a little bit harder to see because we don't often work with adding three numbers. So because you can add in any order, you can't do this with subtraction typically, but you can with addition, I can add in any order. So I can go ahead and just add 17 plus 22. And when I add those two numbers, I get 39. So that means I'm looking for 39 plus what mystery number will get me to 53? Well, I can go ahead and do opposite operation. So it's a plus symbol there. So I am going to do minus. So I'm going to take 53 minus 39. And 13 minus 9 is 4. 4 minus 3 is 1. So that means this is going to be 14. So if I take 17 plus 14 plus 22, that should get me 51. And you can always check that. You could line all three of those numbers up and add them. 
So 2 plus 4 is 6, plus 7 is 13, carry the 1. 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3, plus 2 is 5. So it ends up checking out. Those three numbers equal 53, so my final answer is going to be 14. And so you can guess and check with these also if you want. So we can also do these problems with multiplication. It says which number makes the numbers the sentence true? So 3 times what gets you to 24? Well, if you know that math, math fact by heart, this is fairly easy. If not, you can try the choices that you're given. So 3 times 9 is 27. That doesn't check out. 3 times 10 is 30. So that doesn't check out. And then 3 times 7 is 21, so that doesn't check out, but it's the closest one yet. And then 3 times 8, that one's 24, so that one does check out, so 3 times 8 equals 24. So D is going to be my final answer. Here's another problem where they're just using a symbol to represent a number. So here they just want to know what times 3, what number times 3 equals 15. So if you know that math fact by heart, it should be fairly easy. If not, you can just go through the choices they give you. So 4 times 3 is 12. That doesn't check out. 5 times 3 is 15, which is the answer I'm hoping for. So hopefully B is my answer, and we need to roll out everything else. And so 6 times 3 is 18, which is not our answer. And then last one, 3 times 3 is 9, which is our, not our answer. So that means B is definitely a final answer. So this problem says, J is, has an unknown number of boxes of cookies in his kitchen. He sold 28 boxes of cookies so far. He started out with 94 boxes of cookies. The story can be written as the number sentence below. N plus 28 equals 94. Use the number sentence to find out how many boxes of cookies N are in Jay's kitchen. So here, all they're asking us to do is solve this problem, just like what you did before. It's just this time they add some real world stuff to it so that you can see that this problem actually has a purpose. So you can take all of these choices here and plug them in and see which one adds you to 94. So does 66 plus 28 give you 94? Does 38 plus 28 give you 94? Does 122 plus 90, 28 equal 94? And does 76 plus 28 equal 94? So which one of those is going to be true? Or you can do opposite operations, which says that since it's addition here, if I subtract these two numbers, then I will get 66. And so 66 is going to be my final answer, which is choice A. The next question says, Ross has an unknown number of shirts in his closet. He has 23 short sleeve shirts. The 62 shirts that are left are long sleeved. This story can be written as the number sentence below. N minus 23 equals 62. Use the number of sentences to find out how many shirts N are in Ross's closet. So all it is is it gives you a real world context of what this re equation re represents and asks you to solve it. So you can try each of these numbers. You can take 85 minus 23, 108 minus 23, 9, 39 minus 23, and 72 minus 23 and see which one's going to give you the right answer that you're looking for in this problem of 62. Or you can do opposite operations. So since this is a minus 23, I'm going to add it to both sides, so that means 62 plus 23 is 85. So that's going to make A my final answer. This question says there are two trees in Jeffrey's yard. There are an unknown amount of squirrels in each tree and 20 squirrels in all. This story can be written as the number sentence below. 2 times N equals 20. The number sentence Find, use the number sentence to find how many squirrels n are in each tree. So once again, they just gave us this word problem and connected it to this equation, and they're asking us to solve for n. So you can look through your choices here and say, does 2 times 10 equal 20? Does 2 times 20 equal 20? Does 2 times 18 equal 20? Or does 2 times 2 equal 20? And that should give you the right answer. Or you can do the opposite operation. So 
20 divided by 2 is going to equal 10. So that means that's most likely going to be my answer. And if you try it out with mama, so 2 times 10 equals 20, then you will see that it's true. Thank you for joining us today, and I hope you learned something new.